It's a big night tonight. A big, big night, not just with the big football game at the end of this show, but we're so happy to welcome back Sam Fender with brand new music. Lots to talk about. Uh, he's going to be on the show live in just a couple of songs' time. So people over the world who love Sam Fender's music, this is the time to assemble. 81199 is the text number. At BBCR1 is how you can reach us on Twitter. Get your names in. We'll shout you out. We'll do roll calls. It's time to celebrate. So excited for Sam's new song, Ross in Nottingham, hello to you, buzzing. Hello, Harriet, excited to hear the song. Sam is the most incredible artist and genuine guy. Great night ahead, this tune and England to win the game later. I love that, Harriet. Positive affirmations, positive. So play God, Sam Fender's debut single released in March 2017. Then we had that album, the debut album, Hypersonic Missiles, released in September 2019. Sam was on this show about six months ago, actually, where we made his beautiful song, Winter Song, the cover version, a kind of Christmas song, a hottest record in the world. And I know that moved a lot of us over the Christmas period. But he's back, he's here, brand new music, lots to talk about. And he'll be on the show straight after this. Dutch kids of blue. Hello, Joel and Becca in Belfast. So hard for new music from Sam Fender, favorite artist for the past four years. Hello, Tori, Allison and Frome. So excited for new music from Sam Fender. This is any Max hottest record in the world. Sam Fender is here. Sam, hello. Hello. You're right. How's it going? Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's great to have you on. Oh, mate, I'm like, I'm, I'm freaking out, <laughs> freaking out, having a full pelt. You're doing Panic a good attack. job. You fit, Excitement. You fit, you fit. You look like you're pretty. You look like you've got it all under control. I've got to say, you got I'm your all, England yeah. shirt on. You're in the studio. Got I see like a six guitars racked up behind you. You look exactly like how I would assume you're going to. I'm gonna, in my safe, my safe, safe place, space. You know? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Safe space. Uh, this is good. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks, babe. I'm really happy that you're here. I, I feel I feel the weight of anticipation from Sam Fender fans all over the world, and we've got a lot to talk about. But if it's okay with you. I think we should just play the song. Just go for it, yeah? Yeah. Definitely. Is I'm there, well is there anything you want to tell us about this song? First, tell us what it's called, please. Well, it's, it's called 17 Going Under, and um, it's going to be the first track of my second album. And it's a song about growing up. Um, that's probably all you need to know, really. Right, let's do it. It's your hottest record in the world, Sam Fender, 17 Going Under. Now, this is any Max hottest record in the world. There you have it. Sam Fender, 17 going under. That is the first play of two plays uh, tonight. Hottest record always gets two. Sure, we'll do three. We'll do four if you need it. You know, as many times as it takes for us to get our ears and, and our heads and around this new song. Um, people absolutely loving it, Sam. As 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 you would imagine, um, Beth saying this is what we need. Sam Fender bringing us the emotional vibes, half sadness and half joyful. Uh, legendary. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the story of this song, which is this very kind of vivid picture of you at 17. Yeah. Uh, at least yeah. I think it's you. I'm presuming. Yeah, it's, no, am I no, right? It, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it, it, a lot of this record is a hell of a lot more personal than than the first one because I, I kind of, everyone with the lockdown was, I was kind of forced to look inwards. I didn't have any, as many things to look at or point at. Yeah. So all of the songs kind of, I turned the, the sort of, uh, the magnifying glass inwards on me cell and started writing about growing up in Shields and writing about me and my mom when things weren't so great. And it's kind of, you know, it talks about the, the, the darker times, but how that sort of adversity is what carves you into an adult, you know, and, and mm. how it kind of affects the person who you are and, and what you stand for. So, and that's where the sort of, the, a lot of the album is about that, but 17 going under, I think is a good introduction to where to where these stories are coming from, you know, I think yeah. it's, uh, yeah. It's a good start. How was how was writing about that? I mean, cuz when you're a teenager, you feel life so viscerally, don't you? You feel things in yeah. such extremes, don't you? And it's really hard to process it at that age yeah. as well, like what's going on? Like I, that's why I'm writing about it now because to be honest, a lot of the stuff that happened when I was 17, 18, there was a lot of sort of big moments and yeah. it wasn't the easiest time of my life and I kind of it took us 
to you know my mid twenties to kind of process that stuff and be able to actually write about it in a way that's you know enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, so yeah, to get it to get it in there, I'm I'm just it's it's it means so much to us this this record, you know. It's yeah, you so learn. I mean, you learn so much about you in that song. That that's why your writing your songwriting is just so powerful because it's so economical. You know, you you, you just get these really. Um, like brush strokes of, of kind of of descriptions and 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 pictures painted of of you at that age, but you you get this really full full picture of who you were. Yeah, yeah. Like, how do you feel? Like, without wanting to delve too deep, because this is your business and your life. But like, when you did, like, you you say you write to know yourself, right? So after writing that song yeah. and listening back to it, you must have been like, yeah. how did you feel about yourself as a seventeen year old? Well, it's it's a, probably a lot of the things that you, you kind of wish you could say. Yeah, it, I've come out in that song, you know. I think, and it's it's all of the all of the insecurities of that that we all have when we're growing up. Kind of, I think like it's not it's only now that I've been able to kind of kind of mm. you know put it into into a into a narrative. But I'm just yeah, I'm just chuffed with it, man. Like I'm really. Mm. I'm chuffed with the with the story. I feel like it paints a picture. I feel like there's a million kids out there who, you know, are probably even right now doing the same thing. The DWP are, are having a go at their parents who maybe aren't fit to work or whatever, and you know, and that and they've got to try and you know navigate you know teenage life with all of these really adult things happening around them. Right. Um, so I think that's kind of what it's what it's uh, that's who I'm singing for, you know. And uh, has your mammy heard it? Yeah, she has. Okay. Hey. Um, we we are going to talk about lots more. Um, we have to talk about the album, which is also called Seventeen Going Under. And am I right in yeah. saying, Sam, that this is the opening track of the album? This is the first track, track one. Okay, there's lots to talk about. Let's play it again uh, for those who need to hear that again. Um, hello, John and Gateshead. Shivers, so amazing to hear that from Sam. Such a wonderful storyteller who sounds just like me and my friends growing up. So let's do it. Just like I said, Sam, I think a lot of people are going to relate to this. Uh, we'll play it again. It's your hottest record in the world. Sam Fender, 17, going under on Radio 1. Hello, James Clayton. He says Sam's new record is absolutely boss. His talent knows no boundaries. The stories he tells with his songs are breathtaking. Up the tomb. Yes, yes, <laughs> Thanks, mate. Hello, Bonnie as well, who says, uh, took my mum and dad to see Sam in Dundee in 2019, had the time of our lives. Can't wait to sing the oohs of hypersonic missiles in a big sweaty room again soon. <laughs> and then this song is like the best coming of age movie soundtrack ever. Didn't think he That's could raise the bar yes, even further. Mate. It is that, isn't yes, it? Babe. That's what I was going for. I wanted. Yeah. It, I want the whole record to be like an 80s coming of age movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, well, let's talk about the whole record. So we now know how the record opens with seven Seventeen going yes. under. It's called that as as well. Yes. Um, tell us, tell us about. Okay, so we've spoken since you've been making it, and you've hinted at being in Ireland and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But in terms of like going into the new record after hypersonic missiles, yeah, like yeah. where was your head at? It was like, well, I, I was, you know, a lot of the songs of hypersonic missiles I'd wrote when I was like, you know, 19, 20, 21, 22, like early twenties, and and it was like, and. Uh, this record was all condensed of a two-year period, so right. to like to ha have all of these songs was just insane. I had sixty songs for oh the album God. that I ended up writing by the end of it, you know. And it was kind of like trying Where, to how find did you have time that... to do this? I went, was you writing on the road? Well, I had a lock. We had an international oh, the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just That's sat, small like, matter. Right, yeah. I, I'll just do all that, like you know. Right. So, I, and then. Um, but always the, the songs that ended up making the cut for the album always seemed to be the ones that were more personal. Yeah. They just seemed to sing more. I don't know why. Mm. I, I think it's just because it, it you can't fake something if, if it's true, you know, you can't fake something if it's if it's if it belongs to you and it's a part of your story. Yeah. And I think um that's why we've, the whole record just has become this really personal thing and it's but I'm I'm really proud of it and I'm very anxious and very terrified because you know it is it is very much my own and a lot of the stories are mine and mm. um, some of them are about other people but a vast majority of it is taken from my own life uh, as a mm. growing up as a kid in Shields and uh, so it's yeah I'm I'm mega excited but mega scared as well so so, just so hope people like it you know? yeah so so the album came out um, hypersonic missiles debut album number one you toured a lot. Um, then the, the the pandemic happened, and you find yourself yeah. back in North Shields, and this whole yeah. momentum, this whole movement, this whole kind of feeling like you know your music is spreading out around the world, and that just stops. Like, 
What, did, what did you do? Well, I would like go out on walks in the in the late night, you know, when 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 we're when we're supposed to night, you know, probably be indoors. And I'd like at midnight, I'd walk around my hometown, and there'd be nobody out. It would be completely mm. dead, obviously, because of the beginning of the lockdown. Yeah. And I just like I'm talking like one in the morning. I'd walk around my hometown, and every street was like, every street was like littered with like you know a ghost or a memory or something that like sure. you know I grew up with. So every every walk that I was going out every night was just like there was a story that I remembered or something that happened and and it just amalgamated into this this record which is completely personal and so it's just mad yeah. <laughs> it's mad isn't it it's mad that at this point where you were kind of where, where the music was taking you probably further away from North Shields in terms of touring and travelling further around the world and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and just being busy that yeah, yeah. You, you ended up going totally backwards in order to be inspired to, to put out this yeah, well, whole album. I mean, I suppose the back end of Hypersonic Missiles was done, I've toured for like three, four years yeah. before I released my first album, you know, so I was just like away all the time. And yeah. then now, like, I've been at home and, you know, you you, you, you walk down some street in it, like, you know, that it pulls out a load of emotion that you, you, mm. you, you know, it'll just be like singing someone's front door that you used to know or something, yeah. you know what I mean? And then like, just brings back like a thousand memories of, people who aren't here anymore and all that and so, yeah so how do so, you yeah. feel about that time now you have hindsight on it like yeah crazy it's you know it's it's the you don't realize how much of it you carry you know until like you know until you're like forced to talk about it <laughs> 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 and, um, which i you know i have been at times but um yeah. and uh now I, I i think i used to carry a lot of I think a lot, as a lot of kids do, I used to carry a lot of sort of uh, anger and, and yeah. You talk about it in the and, song, and, yeah. And um, and I, I've through writing this record, I feel like I've been able to let go of a few things that were kind of etched on my mind for years, you know. Mm. And I think, and I've been able to repair certain relationships in my life and mm. being able to kind of get a get a sort of bird's eye view on things a bit more and get a bit more perspective and mm. through the through the through the utter solace and loneliness of lockdown. <laughs> right. I mean, like the, the kind of um, relentless optimist to me is thinking that maybe it's all fake. And, you know, obviously not the awful dark side of lockdown. And, you know, you talk about yeah, the loneliness yeah. and people, but just the idea of you and your career path having yeah. to be forced to take the step backwards and kind of confront who you were and then be stronger for it in order to move yeah, forward. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's you know, it's, it's been a big challenge for a lot of people. You know, and I'm, I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of glad that we're we're coming to the end of it. And, and now it's time. I'm coming to the end of it at the right time because I'm coming at the end of it with a with an album. Yeah. I'm really proud of. Right. I'm like ready to go and get big. You know. So let's talk about music. Like, like, how did you want this album to sound? Well, I was listening to a lot more of the American sort of stuff. I've, I've listened to a lot of my favorite artists are from the States at the moment. Um, so I wanted I wanted it to be grander. Um, I wanted to focus on more me guitar playing as well, a bit more of that, Great. but also just incorporating loads of different stuff. I wanted that wall of sound sort of classic, you know, I reference Springsteen all the time, but you know, this yeah. Phil Spector sort of wall of sound thing yeah. where there's just big arrangements. I mean, one of the tracks that's on this album has 164 tracks of audio on. Wow. It's, like, it's ridiculous. It's got strings, brass, like everything. Wow. You know, there's a lot of, it's a bigger record, like yeah. sonically. Yeah. has like a lot of different, a lot of different instruments on and a lot of different arrangements. And I'm just like, you know, I kind of wait for you to hear it, to be honest. Like, so it comes out in October? October 8th, I, mm, mm. 8th October. And and how was uh, how was that idea of working with big orchestras and like going from someone who's in a in a band, traditional in that way, to then like expanding? How did you feel about arranging well, just, music in that way and working with I people? I loved it, I loved it, man. I, I yeah. loved it, it was great because I don't write music. Like I'm, you know, I'm thick as mince. I'm not a real musician. <laughs> no, I, I, th so, I think the phrase is, it's not like traditional, is it? In the I'm way not that a traditional, you, you know, yeah. I didn't get uh, any yeah, posh place, but yeah. I, I, like I can. You um, learn yourself. Da me, me dad can write write dots, so right. like I, I I translate it. So I'd just sing in the string parts that I wanted, right? And then I would send it to you know someone who who can score it. Yeah, you know, and that's good. Oh, I, I hear all these mental string parts in my head uh, in the in the middle of the night, <laughs> like, <laughs> so. and then I just like sit when I get my phone memo up and go like, doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, and just yeah, put yeah. these strings in, and then and then. It's mad because it's. I've seen all of this stuff come to life, and you're seeing like a, a whole string section play it back to you, and you're like, that was just like wow. a, a whistling in my mind. 
like wow. a couple of weeks ago. And now, now it's, it's this lush there. 24 string, like, <laughs> it's insane, oh my I God. Yeah. Can't wait for you to hear all of it, you know. Yeah. But I'm so chuffed with it. I've had 17 going under for like ages. Really? Now, this is like the one, this is the song that was kind of like the key to the rest of the album. Because okay. I went really personal when I got back home after, I was mixing Hypersonic Missiles when mm. I wrote this song. Like mm. I hadn't even oh, released wow. Hypersonic when wow, I wrote okay. this song. 17 and then the rest of it that's why it kind of has a similar feel to the borders i think it's yeah kind of yeah and, it's um, got that same kind of groove and driving momentum yeah, yeah driving tune yeah and then uh yeah it's just kind of opened the key to all of these other tunes which i'm i'm really proud of man honestly like yeah i cannot, I cannot believe it okay so the album's called 17 going under comes out in october i know loads of people listening loads pre-order of questions it. pre-order it you can pre-order it but send me your questions now please because sam if you don't mind will you hang out for another minute or so yeah of course let's ma- let's make it more than one minute maybe five minutes or something. and uh, we'll, we'll put some questions to sam get them in now 81199 um on the text or at bbcr1 on twitter i'll play you the sherlock's now and sam fender is going to be here Answering some questions after this. We haven't even talked about the football, Sam. It's a big night. Yeah. All right. That's the Sherlock's I'm Falling. We are joined by Sam Fender. He is here. It's a very big day for Sam Fender. He's just, if you just tuned in, by the way, he's just played us uh, his new song, 17 Going Under. We played it twice. It's our hottest record in the world. The album is also called That. Comes out October the 8th. And Sam, there's so many questions uh, for you. I'm just going to, I'm just going to ask some quick ones. Um, Loads of people obviously wanting to know about touring because pandemics and things is there anything you can tell us about plans for that i'm still waiting to so i'm in the same boat because i keep keep seeing people online going like on obviously rightly so being like when are the gigs coming out but i'm in the same boat i keep asking the team every week you know like when when's this happening but i think now that these new things have been put up on the line and by the government then hopefully there should be something coming through you know yeah yeah okay um uh, Law in Hartlepool wants to know a very important question of what you're having for dinner tonight. I don't know. I don't know. My mate Joe's staying with us at the moment and he's a chef, so I'll probably just get God, him. That's a handy friend to have, isn't it? Uh, he's a good lad. Like uh, he's, he's he's the singer of a band called Festival of Parade, but he's also a chef, so he's multi-talented, multi-talented legend. Multi-talented, yeah. Uh, Neve, are you designing any merch for the new album? Yes. There's a one-legged duck swimming in a circle. Of course, <laughs> I've got loads, <laughs> loads of merch. Okay, good. And and in terms of how the album looks, um, what what's the what's the artwork saying? It's like I'm I'm buzzing with the artwork. It's a lot of hometown stuff. It's yeah. very um, it's a, it's all of the shots were done up here, so it's, wow. it's very much a hometown record. Wow. Okay. Um, someone asked a question earlier, and I don't have your name on. I apologise for that, but they were saying how much Hypersonic Missiles helped them through lockdown and really kind of oh, wow. the album held their hand through feeling lonely and kind of full of despair. And they asked, was there any albums that did that for you during lockdown? Um, or any bands or artists that you listened to that gave you comfort, I suppose? Um, yeah, there's a guy called, I was actually listening to a guy called Craig Finn. Craig and, uh, Finn. Is this, yeah, it's like this really, there's this song called God in Chicago. It's like one of the saddest songs I've ever heard, but right. it was kind of what I needed when I was in that place. Yeah. And his lyrics are brilliant. And the album's called uh, We All Want the Same Things. Right. And that was lush. And then um, and then I was listening to just loads of um, Big Thief. Yeah, I, Big I remember Thief. you saying on the show just before. Back on, back yeah. on the Big Thief. Yeah. Yeah. On, a, on a staple diet of alternative American stuff. Americana <laughs> vibes, yeah. I love all it. That. Love it. Love. Um, okay, so everyone just saying how canny you are, how bonny you are, how much Aww. they're happy to have you on the show and uh and all of that. And um Thank you. Yeah, it's just so good to have you back, man. And and oh, mate. so Honestly, great to have yeah. time with you. Thank you so much. And I just want to say thank you for all of all of your support because you're gone in two weeks, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I've gone. You're, I'm you're, gone. you're Oskies on yeah. the new pastures. No, yeah. mate, I just want to say good luck. Because you're man. a total legend and everything that you've done for me has been immense and you were there at the very beginning. So thanks That's a lot, the mate. joy, watching watching artists like you just evolve and grow and own your stuff and oh, it's the best ever. So it's you're been amazing. You're a bloody national treasure, honey. <laughs> oh, thank you. We need, still need to have a pint. It still has Remember, to happen. It needs to be done at Guinness, Guinness pub. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Get um, it built. I will, I will. Um, Sam Fender, thank you so much. 
Thank you so much. Cheers. Anna. All right. Thanks.